So the handout that I just gave you, let's look at it a little bit deeper. This is the handout for setting yourself up on Windows, and I'm going to give out a handout also for Mac. Just to get a show of hands, how many of you at home uh, would be using a Windows computer? Uh, good amount of people. Okay, how many of you at home would be using a Mac computer? Good two there. Okay, so a little bit less than half, but I'll get you the Mac instructions very soon. I'm going to put them on Blackboard, and I'm going to put them in the... Uh, network folder once I finish polishing them. So the big general idea is you're going to go to visualstudio.com. You want the community edition, not the other one, which I think is enterprise or something like that, which is not free. There's professional and enterprise. Those are not free. Those are hundreds of dollars. You want the community edition. Um, you would click to download, and then on Windows it may ask you to download Microsoft.NET 4.6. You probably already have it on your home computer. If it does tell you you need it, there'll be a link there to say click here to download that. So you install that. That's probably like 100 megabytes or so. Then uh, Visual Studio can be used in a variety of ways, a variety of workloads focused on apps for desktop, focused on you know, um, server apps focused on mobile apps. So we want to activate the mobile development workload <coughs> focusing on JavaScript. There'll be a couple of other options. I'll show a screenshot of this in a moment. There'll be a couple of options where you then have to make the decision. Uh, if you activate Android SDK and Java SE, that's because you're going to be focused on plugging in a real device, a real Android device, to work and see your projects on a real device. If you don't have a real device, you'll need the SDK, the Java, and Google Android emulator and Intel hardware accelerator. That way you'll be able to create a virtual device on your computer, a little mini phone on your computer. Either way, you can also use Google Chrome to do some basic testing of your project. Now, if you select the only the Android SDK and Java SE, the whole installation is about five, meg five gigabytes of space. If you then select everything, it's about like 25 gigabytes. So the good and the bad about using Visual Studio is that it's all integrated into a nice environment that it all works together really well. The bad of it, it's big. It takes up a lot of space. The Visual Studio software plus the add-ons to be able to target the platforms. There's other ones I didn't even mention here, such as the Windows SDK, the Mac SDK. That's going to add a few more gigabytes as well. But if you're on Windows, you will only be able to create Android apps or Windows apps. If you're on the Mac, the Mac instructions will tell you then what you need to do on the Mac. And on the Mac, you'll be able to create iOS apps or Android apps, but not Windows apps. So you will be able to create Android apps on all the platforms, Mac or Windows. But on the Mac, you can only create iOS apps. And on Windows, you can only create Windows apps. Android on all of them. So in this class, this is already set up for us. Virtual devices or real devices. Uh, so, you know, four and a half to 23 gigabytes or so. Go grab a coffee because it's going to take a moment to download. Once that installs, you can start it from your start menu, and then it'll ask you to sign in. The software is free, but it is a uh, 30-day trial, but it is free, and the only thing that you need to do is sign in with a Microsoft account, Hotmail account, you know, Xbox account, any Microsoft account will work to sign in. Skype, yeah, it's all related to Microsoft. So Skype email address, Hotmail, Outlook, Xbox, they're all tied together. So you can skip it the first time, but then 30 days later it'll ask you to sign in and then it unlocks and you can use it forever. People sometimes think, well, I'm going to skip it and now it's asking me to activate. I don't want to pay. You don't have to pay. Community Edition is totally free. You just need a free Microsoft account. And then we'll do this first mobile project together in a moment, because it's pretty cool. I'm going to skip all of that for the moment, deploy to a real device, I'll come back to that. And a bunch of links here. 
all of these links, I recommend you look at them all. We will look at them all together as time goes on. But here is the direct link on how to get started, uh, how Cordova works with Visual Studio, um, how to set this up on your Mac, uh, what else, using the Android emulator, advice on mobile development, another link about Cordova, and then eventually how to publish your app to the App Store. So this is a very valuable set of links that we will look into detail as the class goes on. So for this one, what you should not know for in the classroom, um, for in our classroom, this is the part to do because the rest of this has already been done in this classroom. Now, I have a video that does walk you through step by step uh, on, on Windows what those screens look like. If you'd like to see that, you can go to, uh, you can go to the web youtube.com. slash PMD Interactive. That's the, I mentioned that that's the company that I work with. We've got a video here, a tutorial on how to set up Visual Studio. It was a very popular topic because we're currently we're on Visual Studio 2017. 2015 was the first version that let us create mobile apps. We created a video, How to Use Visual Studio 2015 to Make Android Apps. It went viral. It has like 116,000 views. So our little video on how to teach people, 128,000 views. So when we uploaded this five-minute video on how to use Visual Studio 2015, it became viral. We've uploaded a new one for 2017, which is already up to 413 views. That's the one that that you can watch. Uh, if you look at, it's the first video right there. If you go to youtube.com slash PMD Interactive, the first video here, you, Visual Studio Android App Tutorial. Learn how to make an Android app. So what my handout is, here it is in a 16-minute video, if you want to see it you know, a little more visually. It's me explaining the handout. You know, we don't need to hear myself but it's all here about going to the website, downloading it, it's going to take a while, make sure you set this option over here. So this is what I was saying about there's a screen that talks about workloads. If you want to see what that looks like, it, it's here on my video. Look at all the different ways you can use Visual Studio nowadays. Create apps for Windows, do Python development, data storage, and then the, one of the latest workflows, workloads, mobile development. You can do games with Visual Studio. Look at this. You can make mobile apps with C++. Does anyone know C++? That's another way to make apps. Instead of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, there's also, if you've got C++ experience, develop Linux apps in Visual Studio. That's what I'm saying. Microsoft you know, saw the changing landscape, they put out this free software, any developer, what was the motto? Any developer, any language, any platform, for free. Your apps that you create for free or, or commercial are totally legit and free to create with this. In this 16-minute video, it's not that it takes 16 minutes to set up. What I also show in this video is once you've set it up, an example of creating a project kind of skipping around how to create a product. We'll do this together in a moment. How to test it on a device. How to debug. We'll do all of this together, but here's a quick 16 minute and there I am showing that it'll work on a real device. So talks about Cordova, using vibration, so it's just a quick 16-minute look at how to use Visual Studio for making apps, which is, for us, a four-week-long class to get into all the details. We will still be writing code. We will still be using data roll footer. 
all of that jQuery mobile stuff, all of the stuff we learned last month, we're still going to use it. We're just going to be now in the environment of Visual Studio where we have more powerful debugging tools, testing tools, the ability to deploy it to real devices, and all of that. So that's the video. It's at PM the Interactive YouTube channel. You can check it out some of our other videos. So is that virtual or visual studio? It looks kind of like they have the university, it like auto-fills. Yes, it'll have that as well, like Notepad++, that it'll auto-complete for us if we want. You know, there is your typing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be even better because it's going to pop up and give you a list of possible options instead of Notepad, which kind of guesses and fills it in. Here it'll say, oh, you probably need this code. This is using something called IntelliSense, which is a very cool way to program. It's going to be so much faster and powerful. Yes? What's that? We, c we could still use Notepad++ because all of this is still going to be the usual index HTML and all of that. But the built-in one to Visual Studio is much more modern and powerful. Excuse me, this is PMD inter interactive video? Or there is two videos. One video I put also Victor Campus video. It's supposed to be at the at the address youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. All right, so to start to play with this a little bit, let's, uh, with no pressure, explore Visual Studio a little bit first. Before we get back into starting our hardcore coding, let's just check out Visual Studio for a bit to get acclimated to this. It's going to be different. Notepad is very simple. Open your code, edit your code, run it. Visual Studio is a full, powerful interface, an IDE, an integrated development environment. So let's just kind of check it out for a bit. I'm going to close some stuff here. Go to your Start menu. Search Visual Studio. And Visual Studio 2017. Go ahead and launch it. <coughs> Now, because this software needs to be set up in advance, it is at the time limit of the trial. It will ask us for a signing in. I don't think we can skip it. If we can skip it, great. But last time I checked it a few days ago, maybe it does still let us skip it. Okay, good. So, you can skip it. No big deal if it lets you skip it. If you sign in, the purpose of that is what you also get for free is an online storage where you can save your project online and therefore you don't have to remember to bring a flash drive. You'll just need to sign in again and your code will download every time you come in. I haven't tested that really going from computer to computer. I still bring a flash drive and have my work on my flash drive. But if you'd like to, you can learn more and see how this will sync your code across devices. And this, of course, you have to decide that if you want to do that because of privacy concerns, and all of us have the, our choice to make about, do you want to use cloud storage? It's so convenient, but it could be privacy issues. And um, synchronization time, you know, our network, you have to wait for your app to download before you do anything, which may be, we may have a slow network connection today. And as these apps you know, they're going to be 20 megabytes, 15 megabytes, not so much, but our apps will be uploaded to the cloud. You'll have to download it again every time you come in. Our network may be slow that day, and you're waiting for your app to download while we're already on step two. So from this screen, um, I click not now. You don't have that screen? It does say update. Okay, I guess the trial ended for you guys. Okay, so. I'm going to go through this also. If the trial ended, you have to do it. Remember, when you turn off these computers, it'll forget everything that you did. So it looks like we will have to do this. I don't think we can reset the trial. Either sign in if you've got a Microsoft account, right? Outlook, Hotmail, Xbox, Skype, all of those should work. 
or you'll have to take a moment to click. Oh, wait a minute. <coughs> wait a minute. Look at that. I canceled it. And it did let me. Well, maybe. I don't know. I can't see your screen. Try to sign in or sign up. I'll give you a moment for that. It may then ask you about your theme. Just leave the defaults there and start. So that's a little speed bump that I didn't quite account for. The trial has ended because the software being I installed it over a month ago. So you have to take a moment to either sign in or sign up to create a free account. You may be able to use it until you do so. Because I was able to skip it, it's going to nag me that I need to unlock the evaluation version, but it's just to sign in. So every time we come in, um, one of the things, remember um, last month, to set yourself up, you needed to get a copy of the work um, and start Notepad. Now, when we come in, one of the first things I would recommend you do is start Visual Studio and sign in. And then I'll show you what our process is of working on our project. But uh, if anyone's having any trouble setting up, let me know. Just want to sign in, or if you don't have an account, create an account. So let me talk in a little in general about what we've got here. So Microsoft uh, Visual Studio, this is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It's a pretty complex software that lets you do a lot of things to make apps and all of the things that we need when we make apps. <coughs> Testing the app, debugging it, writing the code, running tests, very complex. Notepad, I really like it, I use it all the time, but it's limited for our purposes now, because we need to do more. We're working with apps, which are more complex than websites. When you sign in here, you may, if you're doing this for the first time, you get a really nice get started screen with a bunch of things, a bunch of links that you might want to read at some point. You know, the keyboard shortcuts. There's some really great keyboard shortcuts when we're writing our code, like to quickly add an H1 tag, quick keyboard shortcut instead of writing it. If we want to read and get more training and languages, Microsoft provides so many great tutorials on so many th web languages and things. And, and, uh, and it'll many times sound like, you know, I work for them or I'm giving them free advertising or something. But no, I'm impressed. I've been impressed how Microsoft has in embraced open source and how they put out these free tools. They, of course, want you to make apps for Windows, and you will be able to. We're going to focus on mobile devices, but all of this comes out for free for us to use. 
recent projects will be noted here. Different things that we can do in the middle opening. Visual Studio Team Services is their version of GitHub. How many of you have heard of GitHub before? If you haven't heard of GitHub, it's a place where you can upload your software, I mean your code, you can upload your code and then access it from any computer. Microsoft has a version, Visual Studio Team Services. It's free and we're able to upload our code in the cloud and then access it from any computer. We've got developer news, it's a bunch of stuff that is here, seven lesser known hacks for debugging in Visual Studio. Well, what we're going to do is play with Visual Studio a little bit as per the handout that I have here, which is create your first mobile project. I've got some quick steps here to create a project. This project won't be anything you really want to keep, but it'll be a way for us to get used to how it, the class will work. Up on the File menu, you also see it there, but up on the File menu, let's go to New, Project. Click on File, New, Project. Because this one has already been set up to focus on mobile apps, that's one of the few kinds of projects we can create. Back on the installation screen, we could select different kinds of things. We can create games using Unity. We can create an, we can create iPhone apps using C++. During that installation screen, you have that option. And you're able to get back to that installation screen somewhere, probably in your Start menu. But I'm going to focus on Android apps in this class because we've got a, a room full of a, a room full of Windows devices. From here, our template on the left. We're going to do JavaScript development for mobile apps with a blank Cordova project. We have ways to install other templates that already have an interface set up. This is literally going to be a blank document, which we need to then create with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, jQuery mobile. But there are ways that we'll see later how to start already with a, with a nav bar app or other navigation systems. The name of the app, where are you saving it to? The name of the solution. They call it a solution in that here's all your graphics, here's all your JavaScript, here's all your stuff of the project. A solution. We can call this for the moment test01. No spaces. Capital letters are fine. And this notice, it will save on this computer, on your computer, in the Documents folder, in the Visual Studio 17 folder, in the Project folder. If you were going to keep this work to go back and forth at home, obviously, you need to browse and select your flash drive. <clears throat> So this project really won't matter, but I'm going to save it on my flash drive. So I'm calling it uh, test1. I'm saving it on my flash drive. Solution name. I guess these two can be different, but I would keep them the same. So it's going to create a directory, and for more complexity, if you set up source control, you can set up the ability to keep track of changes to your project, revert to old versions, kind of more complex than we need to deal with at the moment. What we're about to create here is a Cordova project based on JavaScript, a blank project that uses Cordova to help you build an app that targets Android, iOS, and Windows, so all the major platforms. Click OK. The 
This is going to create a folder in your drive and put all the supporting files. In a moment, then it'll also pop up with a sort of a welcome screen or get started. Just for curiosity, on my flash drive, this folder that I just created, it's about one megabyte with nothing really inside of it. So this screen gives us um, many more steps and tutorials that I recommend you look at. Instructions on how to view it in a browser, other documentation, using something called Ionic, which is like a relative of jQuery Mobile. What is, what's the point, tell me, what's the point of jQuery Mobile? What do we spend all the time with jQuery Mobile? Work faster and easier. Work faster and easier to create an interface. We were able to create nav bars and all of that stuff really easily. Ionic is a competitor. Ionic is another way to do that as well. There's Ionic, there's uh, Onsen, there's jQuery Mobile, there's lots of frameworks that will let us create interfaces. They're recommending Ionic. We have other things we can use like Azure, which is a way for us to connect to servers and online databases. And there's articles on how to publish this. What do you need to do that once the project is finished, let's publish it to the App Store. So it's all in this screen. If you ever accidentally close this screen, you can get back to it by right-clicking the solution, and it is... Where did I see it? There was... All oh, right, there. Uh, no, where was it? I saw... I just saw it the other day. There was a way to bring back that screen. Now oh, we'll find it. But if you uh, if you want to get back to it, there there is a way. Index project. Where did I see it? Anyway, so that screen. What's that? No, it does have. S some name like project intro, something like that. We'll get back to it. So this project that we created, if you look on the right side, these are all of the various pieces that make up our project. The code that we edit will be there. The handout goes on to say, okay, you've created a project, you've saved it, etc. At the top bar, we have this horizontal bar here with some common actions create a new project, new file, save, save all. Then you've got three important icons here. Right now our project is set to debug mode. It's not ready to be published yet. We're still testing it. Eventually we will change this to release mode when we send it to the App Store. So most of the time in part two of the class will be in debug mode. And notice here we're targeting the operating system Android. We can target iOS, Windows, different versions of Windows. We're going to keep it on Android. And then next to that, we have Simulate. If you see those options, we have various built-in simulators. Show me my app in an LG G5. Show me the app in a Galaxy S5. Or a device, which we'll look at later. But this basic template project that we loaded up, click the little green button there to run it, to simulate it. That is also found under Debug menu, Start Debugging. Just click on that green Play button. It's going to then build it the first time. There's Cordova being mentioned behind the scenes. The first time 
doing this build will take the longest because it has to process our current project, it has to set up the Android code, most likely it'll connect to the Google server and download the latest Android code so that it can then convert our HTML code to Java code. If we were working with iOS, it would do the same. It would need to connect to the Apple, to the developer.apple.com site to download the proper code to be able to convert it. This is one of the things that you might want to do at the beginning of the day. I'll remind us of this. Every time we come in, start Visual Studio, sign in, create a test project, and build it so that it just sets up all of the back-end code. Then we'll talk about working with our project. What I often see happen also, which I noted in my handout, I often see that you might get a Windows security alert. You might get a pop-up about the about your firewall. If you get that pop-up about your firewall, you should allow access. We're simulating it via Google Chrome. This assumes you've got Google Chrome on your computer. Free web browser Google Chrome. Google owns Android. Google owns Chrome. And so they're tied together when you do this development. If I don't have a real device, I can use Google Chrome to test it, not perfectly, but pretty well. And so when Google Chrome loads up eventually, I get a window here. Apache Cordova device is ready. So imagine that's a device. My development environment changed a little bit. I'm in debug mode. There's my JavaScript console. So instead of pressing F12 in the browser, don't press F12, it'll actually stop debugging. We have the JavaScript debugger console in Visual Studio. So if you do console.log output, it'll show up there. And this is dynamic. If you make changes to this HTML or CSS or JavaScript, it'll make changes to the simulation. Well, all you did was you clicked on the green mm -hmm. run, and eventually it should have automatically popped up like that. You didn't what? It like froze on We didn't create any folder that we connected with. We no, we did. When we went to File New, that created a folder of a project. This temporary basic project looks like this, and eventually we will integrate it with our project from last month. So why did it give us a bunch of mistakes? Um, that's kind of common. For the, for example, this one is giving me a failed load to resource fav icon. That's common. I don't know why they even show that. I, that's saying it's not, it can't load your fav icon for the website. It doesn't matter. It's not a website. I'm going to ignore that. Saw another hand. Yes. Uh, you need an internet connection the first time when you process it, when you convert it the first time, but then after that you don't. So um, that's a thing also to keep in mind. The first time you do the build, you do need an internet connection. If it didn't quite work, just wait a little bit moment, a little bit longer too. I'll check if it's still not working. Just one moment. But this in Visual Studio hopefully then gives you the gives you the ability there to edit your code. So for example, if I open this div, I open that h1, it says Apache Cordova. I can double click to type my app. If I press enter and edit that, that changed it in the simulator. So we have the ability for us to edit the HTML or the CSS or the JavaScript and we're changing the simulator. So let me just pause right here. How many of you got the devices ready screen? 
Thanks for joining. I'm having a little trouble with you. So this is testing the project, the blank project, in uh, in a simulator. <coughs> if you close the browser or you press stop debugging, it will close the browser and take you back to Visual Studio. We'll look at the value of, of both, of, of live changes and of compiling. But if I close this, stop debugging, it takes me back to Visual Studio. Now, a moment ago I just edited HTML, and the screen disappeared. All of the HTML and CSS of this project is in your solution in the WW folder. So the whole folder includes lots of files that you don't really ever need to look at, except for the WW folder. Index, JavaScript, CSS, images. If you double click, that index HTML on the right side, solution, WW folder. HTML. So all that we've learned last month and more that we will learn, we can apply here. Now in the simulator, I changed line 19 to say my app, but it only changed it temporarily. You can, as we go through the class, uh, I'll explain what you can keep and what you can remove. You can remove mostly everything, um, which we'll see in this div. Everything else I would keep, and we would, and we'll go on to detail about why later. But for the moment, yeah, you can change all of this to be totally different. And I'll go into detail about what it all means. But this HTML code here should look mostly familiar. We've got a section of JavaScript. And notice what's also cool about uh, Visual Studio. If you hover over an item, it will also kind of give you uh, help about what that means, what it does, and you can click learn more to get even more tutorials on some of the code. And let's say, you know, for fun, I'm going to create a new line 20. I get color coding on the left that you've made changes that you haven't saved yet. As I start typing H2, it's going to give me possibilities of what I could type. That's nice. As I close my tag, it closes it. Well, that's, we've seen that with the autocomplete of Notepad. But what's even better here is, as you start to add attributes, I added a space here, and it says these are the possible things you can add to that tag. It's not just a generic list of complete your code. It's a much smarter list of what possible code may go there. It sees here. You might want to use data dash something. I may want to use an ID. So I can ignore that and keep typing and I can turn it off or I can select it and it'll type some of it for me. Let's say for fun I'm adding style. As I start typing and it pops up to guide me, I can press tab to select what it gave me, and then fill in some of this background color, and again it's going to say, do you mean background attachment, background color, background image? I mean background color, arrow keys. Again, I'm kind of going through it a little fast, but we will go through this all in detail. Background color tab, colon. Okay, which color do you need? And it gives me then a visual list of the colors. I needed aquamarine. Semicolon. So we'll do this more in detail, but this is using a, an even more modern and powerful code editor using something they call IntelliSense, which is an intelligent way, more intelligent way to write our code. 
if I wanted to write some JavaScript. Again, this, what I'm writing doesn't matter. I'm just writing stuff. Script, close my script. Alert, it recognizes alert. Tab, this is an alert. Should be done like this. You write an alert, you write a message. So when we get to the JavaScript, it'll say, when you use this command, this is what you should write. So we do this, prompt. I'm going to do a prompt. A prompt is made up of writing some kind of message, which is a string, comma, a default string, and then the string. So this was really going to help us once we get more complex. I find it very useful because I, ha I had us turn off the uh, autocomplete in uh, Notepad. But really, once you get really complex, autocomplete is very, very useful to quickly write your code. I want console. I'm already tired of typing console. I then press tab. It completes it. Dot. These are the possibilities that I can use with console. There's some other ones we never even knew about. Console clear, console info, console.trace. Well, I'm always using console log. Tab. Completes it. Console log usually has a message in any format. Open quote, close quote right away. End of line. These changes have been made so far and have not been saved. And as I have a document of 500 lines, I'm going to get a little preview right here. This is where I'm currently at in my document. Changes have been made. I'm going to be able to find where I made the change. When I save it, Control S turns green. I had made changes there. That, that stuff right there is so useful. It saved me many times when something went wrong and I needed to undo to a certain point. Or what was that thing that I did that broke another thing? Oh, it marked over here. I made a change on line 20. It only stays that way until this file is open as long as this file is open. Once you close it, you reopen it, it resets. So as long as your files are open all day long, it'll keep track of all the changes you made. That'd be even better, wouldn't it? The way it can tell you that is if you do set up source control, which is a little more complex than I want to do now. That will then create an account on their server, which then will keep track of day and time of every change. I made some changes, I saved it, and then I run it, or play it, or simulate, or compile it, whatever you want to call it. I made a change, it's going to start this output again, processing, second time should be faster. There is a lot faster. I didn't need to connect to the internet again. Console outputs, some of these we can ignore, some of them we won't. Changes that I make. Um, we'll appear over here. So all of that output. And I can do live changing here as well. Why doesn't it save it when that when you change it from how it changes to my app, but it didn't save it? I didn't I didn't save it. I didn't press Ctrl S. But what if the mm -hmm. save it? Oh, let me try that. I'm gonna change it. My app. Either or. So I, so I changed it and then uh, and then I'll save it. I did Ctrl S. So it changed it in my, oh, should have. But um, we'll, uh, we'll be back and forth between either the, the editor. Oh, I know why. Um, technically, I, I changed it in the wrong place. I changed it in the DOM Explorer, which is a temporary kind of thing. I should have changed it in the index file. So the confusing thing will be we'll have different little screens to look at. I change it in there. Saved it, saved it there. I stopped my simulator, and it did change it there.
what the simulator also has is, okay, well, this looks like a website, looks like a web browser, what's so special? It's a simulator. You should see one of these tabs that appeared here, Cordova Plugin Simulation. We can pass to the browser various uh, real-world bits of data, such as later, when we learn the code to check the person's location, we can test it to show that we are in Waterloo, that we are in downtown San Diego. We can simulate that the person pressed the back button, because we have a way via JavaScript to detect when the person presses the back button to do something. We have a way for the app to detect if someone shakes the device. We have a simulator to shake the device. It's best to run it on a real device, but if I don't have one, I have various things I can simulate here. So that's testing it on a simulation. We, we'll, we'll need to spend a little bit of time a little later to set up a real device. If you were to plug in your real device right now, it might not work because we need to talk about how to set up your device to work for development. So don't worry about trying to plug it in at the moment. But my device is set up. It should be set up. And we have the option, according to my handout also, deploying to a real device. If you follow these steps, which we will do a little later, we would set up our device for development. This does not jailbreak your device. This does not void your warranty or anything like that. We would just be activating developer mode. Once that is set up, which we will do later, you can then switch your deployment target to device. And if it's properly set up, it'll let me deploy to the real device. Just has to process that a moment. It says device, deploy. A bunch of stuff is going to happen behind the scenes. This one is also one that's going to take a moment the first time because this, this, this stuff has to be set up and downloaded. So you connect it over to gradle.org and it downloaded something and it's going to process something. So the first time you do these deployments, these compilations, it will need to connect online and then subsequent times it doesn't need it. But yeah. that, uh, that project HTML based, we can deploy it to simulators, we can deploy it to real devices. It's all based on HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Visual Studio takes care of a, a lot of the, the background messy stuff because all behind the scenes it's Cordova. Behind the scenes is how I taught the class before. This is how I taught the class for four years. Typing the commands, people struggling and typing the wrong command, and now I've been planning it for a little bit, but the software, I wanted to start with 2015, Visual Studio 2015, but at that moment it was still beta. I wasn't comfortable teaching that in a real class yet. So you guys are the first class that is getting taught Visual Studio 2017. And I've used it and tested it enough that I feel more comfortable to do it in a real classroom to teach you what you need to learn to use this complex software to make your apps. No, they just started 2017 this year for the Mac. So because, they had. Uh, because I think I've been loading it before and it just didn't work at all. Oh, really? Huh. I know that this year they did finally release a working version for the Mac. They might have had a semi working version on previous years. Yes, yeah, one that they would have to run Windows on that in order to. Yeah, exactly. Virtual devices. So this is uh, taking a little longer than I want, but the idea is that in a moment it's going to publish to my to my real device. And we're going to explore all of these different other um, <clears throat> capabilities. Because right now it's just a website. We will see in a moment, I guess right after the break, we will see how to add then 
plugins, which will give us the ability to tap into the camera of the device. Vibration, geolocation, the contacts, and all that cool stuff with JavaScript commands. I learned the JavaScript command. Uh, Visual Studio via Cordova will convert it to the proper command in Java, the proper command in Objective-C that I don't need to know. I just need to know the JavaScript command. So here it comes finally. So eventually it's deploying. It pops up here. And uh, so we've got it right here. Carrie, can you confirm right here that it does say my app? Device ready? There we go. So that thing that I was playing with, and I can continue to edit it here. My app, a couple of exclamation points. Save that. That'll update on my device as well. Uh, it takes a little longer. I have to refresh it. But I can do editing in the environment here. It loads up on the real device. We'll take a break. You can check out Visual Studio for a little bit. When we come back at 8.15, we'll look at other aspects of it. So we'll be back at 8.15.